Why don't we start here? Because I tuned in yesterday and Cam Luke and JJ did a magnificent job and they were discussing Bailey Smith at length and the stories around him. And I was thinking it's 12 months of the year, trade talk. We, we probably saw that develop this year. Um, no, weekly articles on trade and there's been gettable, um, which has been great with Riley and, and Cow on the AFL platform, Mitch Cleary and um, Sammy McClure have done a great job with, with their show, the tradies and their podcast. And of course we cover it um, more than anyone here on, on SEN. It's 12 months of the year trade talk. So the period ended last Wednesday and we've already seen significant trade stories break for next year. The chances of Bailey Smith leaving the Western Bulldogs in 2024 are 80%, according to the Herald Sun's John Ralph, and the boys discussed that at length last night. Sam McClure is reporting that Collingwood and Essendon are in the mix for Bailey Smith alongside Geelong and Hawthorne. He's also been like a dog with a bone, Scoop McClure. He reckons that Dustin Martin is going to finish his career with the Gold Coast Suns. What I do know is the AFL must love it. A full 12 months of player movement conversation and they're going to embrace it further and have agreed with the AFL Players Association under the new collective bargaining agreement to introduce a mid-season trade period. Here is the new CEO, Andrew Dillon, speaking on the chances of it being introduced for next season. Clubs have been told, you know, there's bidding system potential tweaks, there's different looks at the academies as well. How does this market grow and grow and grow? Well, one thing that we uh, we just uh, before the finals uh, did the collective agreement with the Players Association and we've got an agreement from the players to look at mid-season trading. So I think what we'll do over the next um, few months is work out how a mid-season trade, you know, can we get that up and um, what parameters we'll have about that. So I think that's uh, the watch this space. Have we got a percentage chance for next year on mid-season trading? Uh, I think it's uh, even money. Even money. Well, I'd say it's happening. So get get ready for it. It's not it's not far away, uh, and it, it's not going to be a free for all. So there's going to be con- some conditions that need to be met, such as the pay bracket players need to be in to be eligible to be traded. Like in other sports, which have an in season trade period, teams in premiership contention are going to be desperate to add the missing piece and pay a premium for a key player for another club, which presents opportunities for the club that the player is leaving. So just an example, last season in the NBA, the Phoenix Suns, who were in title contention, this is what they coughed up. Three very good players and four first-round draft picks for superstar Kevin Durant from the Brooklyn Nets. Now, Durant's probably got a couple of good seasons left in him, two or three, but he's, he's well into his 30s and probably past his best. And Brooklyn were able to get three very good players and four first-round draft picks for him because Phoenix saw an opportunity, paid a premium, because they thought he may be the missing piece for their title. Uh, He wasn't in the end, but they had a crack. Now, AFL clubs are going to do the same. It won't be to that level, clearly. But depending on how the first half of the year plays out, I thought we may look at some mid-season trades that make sense. So stick with me here. You know that these make sense. And you know that Bailey Smith, makes sense. It's going to be untenable for Smith and the Bulldogs if Luke Beveridge continues to play him out of position. So we know Smith wants midfield minutes. He's desperate, but Beveridge is stubborn. And I think a move mid-year is on the cards and could be beneficial for both. Can you imagine? Can you imagine if he goes to Collingwood, which has been reported, Smith, who's got the largest social media following of any AFL player, joins the biggest club mid-year in its search for back-to-back flags. They'll be in the mix, the Pies. They've lost a midfielder or two recently. Bailey Smith coming into that lineup mid-year would almost be the biggest trade story we've seen in a long time. And it makes sense. And the Bulldogs can cash in for a player who is too good to be starved on half forward and perhaps causing some issues um, on and off the field. What about Tom Lynch? So Richmond's list desperately needs a mini rebuild and access to first-round draft picks. They may be able to cash in on a 31-year-old who played four games last year and is still getting around in a moon boot. Now, if Melbourne, imagine this, if Melbourne are in premiership contention mid-year, you would expect them to pay a significant bounty for Lynch, who Richmond would be delusional not to let go with the state of their list and where they are at. Let's talk about Dustin Martin. So Dustin Martin plays game number 300 in round 11. It's perfect. Get to game 300, mid-season trade comes in, And if he is considering a move to the Gold Coast, most expect the Suns under the new coach to be in contention this season. And we've seen they're prepared to hand out first-round draft picks, like, honestly, like parents hand out lollies on Halloween 
like Lynch, Richmond, Wu would be foolish not to cash in on Martin, shake his hand, put a statue up of him at Punt Road or wherever you want and say thank you. But in the best interest of our club, we free up the salary cap room. We get a first round draft pick in and it works for club and for player. Harrison Petty. Now, Adelaide, I reckon they're going to be in the mix for top four next year. That's the the progression that they are on. The only question over their list, as we know, remains the key defensive post with some injuries and some inexperience back there. And we know Petty's desperate to return home. Adelaide has shown they're prepared to already pay a ridiculous price for him. I reckon they're going to be even more desperate mid-year if there is a glaring hole in the back six and the Crows are in finals contention. It's been a long time for the Crows. I reckon that have a crack and the offer may be too good to refuse for Melbourne. Sean Darcy, the big Fremantle Ruckman, has a contract offer on the table from the Dockers that so far he is wisely ignoring. The Dockers, are they're adamant that this combination with Luke Jackson and Darcy is going to work. I'm certain it won't. Uh, Darcy has the first half of the season to see how this is going to play out. Now, if he's forced to play anywhere other than in the ruck, and if they want to put him, I don't know, let's say 50% forward, and Jackson, because he's a ruckman, he's not a forward, they want to ruck with him, Darcy should explore uh, the flights and jump on the first flight out of Perth and perhaps head to Geelong. If they're in the mix, they need a ruckman. I know they love Conway, but he's injured again and has had surgery. So he's played one game. I think they'd love to get Sean Darcy out of Fremantle, and that just makes sense. And lastly, the sixth player, excuse me, as I spit that out, that makes sense for a mid-season trade is Jake Stringer. If it's if he's got one thing going for him, Jake Stringer, it is the fact that his body and his game is built for finals. Now, if Adelaide, the Giants, Geelong, or the Blues are looking for a finals X Factor mid year, Stringer could be their man. And Essendon can accept overs for an out of contract player who is primarily disappointed in the red and black. It's coming. Twelve month trade talk. I don't even know if I like mid season trading, to be honest. Um, I've been resistant to it because I just feel like it's the one advantage teams have is the way that they assemble their list in the off season Uh, with salary caps and clubs getting rewarded for mediocrity with uh, draft handouts and, and giveaways like we've seen with North Melbourne. The one chance you have is to have a good list management team and get your list right in October and not have to plug some holes and get that get out mid-year. So I don't don't know if I like it, but what I do know is it's going to be an opportunity because clubs are going to overpay uh, for players and clubs that are out of final contention or see an opportunity could cash in. Player salaries, is it just, we're just accepting now that they're becoming public. Like this is a campaign, I've had a few campaigns over the journey um, and a few of them are still ongoing. And a few of them have been successful. I, I, I'm, I'm taking credit for the AFL cracking down on long-term contracts. I love, I love that. Um, but next is making player salaries public. And it's happening without you even knowing. So over the last couple of weeks, I've seen story after story of journalists breaking stories about what players are getting paid. And no one cares. Surprise, surprise, no one cares. So... These are a few examples. Marbiol Chol's salary has been broken down year by year uh, to the point where Tom Morris has even got the trigger clauses in his contract. Marbiol Chol's salary at Hawthorne is $1.8 million across the first four years. 2024 is 400. 2025 is 400. 26 is 500. 27 is 500. And there is a trigger if he plays 17 games in 28 that he gets a fifth year. He's got all those details. Now, I assume that's from the club that he's left, that he's more than happy to volunteer the information. I've got no idea where Tom got his story from, but you would think it is in Gold Coast's interest to reveal that, as it would be in Geelong's interest to tell John Ralph that Asava Radagalia, his deal is worth as much as $700,000 per year at Port Adelaide. That's just been reported. Cow to me on Jade Gresham. His contract with the Bombers is around 700000 a year. And Cal was in great form, as he always is through the trade period, broke the story that Ben Mackay's deal is 850000 plus. So when are we going to mature and grow up? And when are the AFL Players Association just going to accept that it is better if we actually have the accurate information? Because no one knows whether that is accurate. I'm not questioning the reports of Tom and Ralphie and, and Cal Toomey on that. I'm, I'm assuming it is accurate and has been leaked from the clubs that they are leaving 
but it's just accepted and no one cares. So for members and for fans who invest so much money in their club to actually have this information and keep their club accountable for the way that they are managing their salary cap and contracts when there's been so many disasters would be a good thing. And I don't think it's detrimental to the players either. I think other clubs would see it as an opportunity to go, okay, well, Jamar Eugle Hagen, he's on 500. I reckon we can get him for seven. Well, that's good for the player, not bad. So I think it's time we grow up. On a day where we've seen Giannis Antetokounmpo sign a $186 million deal, $62 million a year, it's public. Josh Green, the Aussie at the Mavericks, signed for $41 million for three years. We know that information. It is better for the NBA fan, like it will be better for the football fan if wages become public. Because it's happening and you haven't even realized it yet. one 736 736 to have your say on that. But that is another campaign of mine and I'm not going to stop.